Funny things happen when man ignores the clear revelation of God and creation and conscience, pulls out his microscope and his telescope and buries his face in a pile of protons and bacteria. Yes, she can predict and explain things for herself rather than having to appeal to the sky in an impotent and doomed desperation. Also, whilst I have no idea what a telescope is, I do have an uneasy feeling that the burying my face in a pile of bacteria analogy is about to prove that. <laughs> Many people are seeking after the truth with no respect to the author of it. <laughs> now this natural mindset, this naturalistic way of thinking, leads some people to look at people who believe in God, people who say that there's a God, and say, oh, that's just like believing in leprechauns, or the flying spaghetti monster, or, you know, Bigfoot. Well, can you blame them? I mean, if the existence of something doesn't add to the prediction and explanation of phenomena, how is it supposed to cover the costs of believing it? So this um, flying spaghetti monster thing and leprechaun thing is really missing the point altogether. It's a bit disingenuous. I mean, these things are would be part of nature. These things would be things that you could see or touch. Nope, because nature, as it is addressed by scientists, is not just the realm of things that can be ogled or fondled. Nature, as scientists understand it, is stuffed full of unobservables and unhandleables, like quarks, centres of gravity, and more rarely, mental states. So your kippered herring, sir, it does not distract the hounds. I myself believe, maybe you, don't believe. And um, God has created and revealed himself in such a way that it's all about faith. It's all about a choice. This is not an intellectual issue. It is a moral issue. Are you seriously suggesting that we surrender the justification of belief to faith, intuition, and common sense? The, the track record of those things as justification is dreadful, deadly in fact, to the point where it becomes a moral issue when people advocate faith as public policy. Furthermore, claiming that uh, belief is a moral choice and thus that uh, God will punish you if you don't believe in him isn't even an argument, it's a threat. If you don't agree with that, then I'll just have to come round your house and put a raccoon in your trash can. When we're talking about God, we're trying to account for existence itself. Uh, we're trying to account for a waxing and waning, measurable, contingent universe. We're trying to account for beautifully engineered, complex life and the uniqueness of man above beast. And we really shouldn't have to explain these things. Um, why not? And why not in natural terms? Well, perhaps the issue here is whether or not answers to questions like what is there, how do we know, is it good, can be found in science. Well, that's very much a live debate in philosophy, but it is a debate in which many, including myself, argue that science-based answers can be found, and that thus there is no real need for an a priori first philosophy that is both autonomous from and foundational to science. Sure, that's a debatable claim, but what's certain is that repeat rhetorical proclamations of the anti-naturalist case alone, set to the drumbeat of ideological and theological enthusiasm, does nothing to rule out the possibility that science may have something to say about existence, truth and value. These people, maybe you're one of them, um, hold to a naturalistic view of the world. They're using methodological naturalism, um, which is basically um, a, a search for truth using and allowing natural causation only. Uh, you see it on the Discovery Channel. You see it in schools. Make no mistake about it. These people are using methodological naturalism 
to find all truth, to find ultimate truth. Strictly speaking, methodological naturalism need make no claim to all logically possible truths, nor to ultimate truth. Which is just as well, as the idea of ultimate truth is wildly speculative and possessed of certain anti-intellectual and authoritarian overtones. I mean, why would anyone even want to admit that there is some true statement, such as its justification, would terminate all interest in or need for further truth? What's more, if one were to accept such a truth, such as God exists, which I suspect is what you have in mind, the clear implication is that we should thereby turn off our minds, our curiosity, our critical faculties. The message is clear. Don't think, obey. The response is stock. Go fuck yourself. And I heard a guy today say, oh, there's just not sufficient evidence for God. Well, of course there's not going to be sufficient evidence for God if all you got is a telescope and a microscope. Well, that guy may have had a point anyway, because methodological naturalism need not claim with absolute certainty that only natural things exist. There's no contradiction in a methodological naturalist holding their position provisionally as a matter of predictive and explanatory expedience. It is not, therefore, as you suggest, simply a dogmatic denial of the supernatural. So, science and this religion of naturalism take the place of God. And these people that sign, up, sign themselves up as people of logic and reason, we really find out that they're believers, just like us Christians. Not really, no, at least not Christians like you. Because naturalism is not blind fideism. Naturalism, like proper Christianity, is responsive to reason and evidence and tolerant of doubt in a way that you fundies with your doubt-fearing fervour are not. In fact, what kind of Christian is it who lacks faith to the extent that they must heckle all doubt in others? and is so without hope as to despair of all who disagree with them, even in the slightest, and is so uncharitable as to not even endeavour to give an honest account of opposing views. So no thank you, and please feel free to piss off and never darken my YouTube searches for naturalism again. Bye. <laughs>